Imagine loving your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, where we are talking about everyone's favorite emotion, envy, and specifically why being green with envy can be a very good thing. I remember clearly when I had this insight into the way to use this emotion for good, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. I know you'll have an aha moment or two. (laughs) Okay, a couple of things before we get started. First, I want to thank you for being here. Like, seriously, I really mean it. I keep getting on the phone with women who book a free call about working together. And when I get on, they have a little fangirl moment. It is so cute. It's so adorable. They know all my little stupid stories. They know about my dog, Nico. They know all of it. And I know nothing about them. It is just so crazy and so much fun. One woman this week told me that I have been driving around with her for weeks as she binged the podcast, that we've been all over the place together to the grocery store, to the hardware store, just running errands. It's been so much fun to think that we are connecting this way. It just warms my heart. I just love it that it's technology like this that has brought us together. If you would have asked me 10 years ago how likely I would have been to have so many people listening to the podcast that I made with my own little hands, voice, and brain, I would have asked you what a podcast was and thought you were crazy. (laughs) 10 years ago, I was stuck in my long-term job wondering what I should do, whining to all my friends about how miserable I was and being so conflicted about how I could possibly move on when I had such amazing dental coverage and how my job was really so good and my benefits were awesome. I had such fear and limiting beliefs. I had no ability to dream. My creativity felt squelched and I felt so downtrodden. Now, don't get me wrong. I had a great life. I had a good job. I had good vacations, amazing husband and kids, and the cutest dog and bird ever. (laughs) But how I thought and felt was another story. When you're stuck, it's very hard to see your way out for lots of reasons. And we'll touch on this in today's show. I really couldn't see my way forward, and I was scared for reasons I didn't even understand. That's a midlife funk for (laughs) you. That's also why I want to make a request that you share this podcast. Please help other funky women in the middle who are just waiting to find a little something like this podcast that can really help them shift their mindset towards being happier and more excited about their lives. Think of referring the Women in the Middle podcast as helping them take the first step. And when you're stuck, a baby step is a big deal. You may have to show them how to listen on their phone, too, as they may not realize that they have a podcast app already on their phone, ready to go. I really appreciate your help in getting the word out there, too, because when you're stuck, the Women in the Middle podcast is there for you. I'm there for you. I would really, really appreciate that. Okay, so now I want to talk to you a little bit about the 50 Unplugged Mastermind, which is the number one way to work together to help you focus on what you can do with your next chapter instead of what you like to think about, which is what you can't do. 50 Unplugged is for women who are making a serious commitment to themselves. They're ready to do work on creating a big personal transformation over the course of a year. They know it's a priority and they're finally ready to put themselves first and dive in because they also know that they will regret it if they don't. 
50 Unplugged is all about becoming bold and brave in midlife so that you become who you need to be to go after your priorities in life. It's all about up-leveling so that you know in your heart of hearts that you stopped playing small. It's about getting out of your own way so that you're more comfortable and intentional about allowing yourself to be happier. It's about taking control of your life instead of letting a few more years or decades fly by without you being intentional. It's about finally putting yourself first so that you get the support you need to learn what you want and need, and more importantly, know exactly how to make it happen. There are retreats involved too, and so far they've been in Toronto and Palm Springs, and they have been amazing. It sounds pretty good, right? Head over to www.talktosuzy.com and learn more. You can grab your Kickstart call, and we'll talk about if it's a good fit for you. I also want to let you know that the mastermind and private coaching prices are going up soon, so make sure to book your call now if you were thinking of working with me this way. All right, let's dive in. I think being green with envy can be a very good thing. I really, really do. So let me tell you how I started to figure this all out. It was over a decade ago, maybe 12 or 13 years or so. I was doing a needlepoint project. I was making keepsake bags for my kids' bar mitzvahs. One custom in our community is for these bags to be made by needlepoint. Now, sometimes the special bag is the type of thing that might be inherited or passed down, and sometimes a mom or often a grandmother makes it. Now, I love this idea that I would be making a beautiful handmade keepsake for each of my three sons. To be sure, the boys don't care about these handmade bags made with love like we do, (laughs) but the women who make them care deeply. And so we toil away for months and months until they're finished, assembled and lined and customized with the child's name and birth date. Now, they don't all have to be made. Some people just purchase them and they certainly don't have to be needlepoint. And I know if you're not familiar with this, you're thinking, come on, a 13-year-old boy is going to carry around something that looks like their grandmother's couch pillow. (laughs) And I understand that it might sound kind of weird, but in our community, it is a keepsake and uh, kids do it. And I don't even, it's not that they love it. I think they appreciate it when they're older, but they do it. It's common. It doesn't stand out as something weird. So in my case, I always loved the look of needlepoint, like I said. So off I went to the needlepoint store. Yes, there is such a thing as a needlepoint store. I live in a big city and we have such a thing. Who knew, right? (laughs) That is, of course, unless you're familiar with a yarn store or any kind of a textile related craft, then you might be in the know. I was, however, going into very unfamiliar territory because I didn't know how to needlepoint and I'd never done anything like this. But this particular needlepoint store was fairly large and had everything that I was looking for and more, really. My head exploded when I walked in, kind of like when you walk into Michael's, right? When you're kind of crafty, you get all excited. There were beautiful colored threads and patterns hand-painted on canvases everywhere. It was kind of like wallpaper, the way it was all over the walls. I could not believe what I was seeing. I had no idea. It was a cornucopia of delight for the eyes. But wait, there was more. At the back of the store, I saw a little gaggle of ladies gathered around a raised table studying, like looking over, looking closely, carefully studying. What was going on over there, I wondered. The owner of the store was answering their questions and teaching them how to add delicate beads to their needle-pointed designs. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know there was such a demand for craftsmanship with needlepoint. I didn't know there was such a demand about needlepoint for people to learn. But it makes sense. If you have this interest and you don't have grandmother or your mom or somebody there to teach you, where do you go to learn stuff? You can go on YouTube, but this was way better to be with other women and real experts in the area. You know, so I I really didn't know what was going on here, but there I was standing in a like a rather large specialty store with a bunch of happy women learning stuff. I was so excited. I waited my turn for help, and then I picked the canvas 
and I picked my threads and I got all set up with my project. The owner of the store could also tell that I probably needed reading glasses because of the way I was asking questions and I couldn't really tell the difference between the tiny stitches when they were in blue and black. So she's like, you know what? I think you need reading glasses. She was the first person that pointed that out. Now I was in my mid 40s. It kind of makes sense. But before then, it never occurred to me. There it was. She had neat, she had needlepoint um, magnification um, glasses, magnifying type glasses at the counter. And then she also had these clip on lights and she had reading glasses. Everything you need when you're a midlife gal working on these types of teeny tiny projects. So I got what I needed and off I went out of the beautiful store with the happy ladies and back to my J-O-B full of not as happy ladies not doing creative things. (laughs) I mean, there was a lot of creativity where I worked, but it wasn't this type of creativity. This was very different. And I just, I don't know, I just had such a warm feeling in my heart when I thought about doing this type of a project for my kid, doing it for myself, And just being around the texture of the threads and and being able to focus like that, all of it, I just loved it. Do you do do needlepoint? Do you do any of these kinds of um, crafts, embroidery, anything like that, sewing, quilting, the focus? Oh my gosh, I don't do any of that other stuff. But this, for some reason, caught my attention. Anyway, like I said, there I sat at my desk at work a little shell-shocked from the whole pleasurable experience that I had. And I was thinking, what the heck? I thought about the woman at the needlepoint store, the owner who figured out how to follow her passion and do what she loves. And I didn't. I realized that I had been ignoring something important, kind of hiding from seeing what I needed to see. And all I felt was envy. Envy. Ew, like it really felt uncomfortable and it felt weird. I felt so uncomfortable and sad. I couldn't stop thinking about the needlepoint lady. There was a lot to process. And you know, with envy, envy isn't a feeling that many of us feel that often or that we feel in a way that we really connect with it. It's kind of like, ooh, this is uncomfortable. I want it to stop. (laughs) Now, here's what envy means. It's the feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. I did feel discontent, that is for sure. I was thinking all kinds of things. One thought was that this lady followed her passion and I didn't. Another thought was, I always thought I would be doing something more interesting with my career by now. Followed by this thought, I always thought I'd be an entrepreneur by my age. And this one too. She figured out how to make a living from creativity, dot, dot, dot. And I didn't. Notice how much of my thinking was about what I thought I'd be doing by now, my age, which was mid-40s at the time. Then I started to feel a little regretful, very focused on what I hadn't done versus what I had done. Now, just to be clear, envy isn't really the same as jealousy, even though the two words are often used in the same way. Envy is most often used to refer to a covetous feeling toward another person's stuff, or specifically their attributes, possessions, or stature in life. Envy means discontented longing for someone else's advantages. Jealousy means unpleasant suspicion or apprehension or being rivals. When you're jealous, it's more about being hostile toward the one believed to enjoy an advantage. Think about junior high, for example. I'm sure some of those examples will pop up. Also, with jealousy, there's usually more insecurity and fear about lacking something. You might even feel angry, inadequate, helpless, anxious, or suspicious. That's not what I mean by envy at all. Envy is really just about when you want a possession or situation that someone else has. For sure, I wanted what the needlepoint lady had, a career aligned with my passion. That's what I wanted. So do you remember that I'm suggesting that envy is a good thing? (laughs) Well, I totally think it is. 
And the reason why is a big secret. But this secret needs to get out. It needs to get out there. We got to blow the lid off this one. The secret is that you can use envy for awareness about what you really, really want. And why might this be important? Because amazing women like you often have trouble knowing and dreaming about what you really want. I can't tell you how many times a day I hear this. With envy, it's kind of, it's weird. It kind of sneaks up on you unknowingly. And then before you're aware of what's going on, bam, you're envious. The mind drama doesn't have time to get in the way. You really don't expect it, but you feel it. So that day for me in the needlepoint store, I had no idea I was on the verge of an epiphany and I was going to feel envy. I didn't know how much I thought that I would have been an entrepreneur by then. I didn't know how much I thought that. I love this about envy. We think we're on top of our thoughts, but envy just snuck in there based on a thought I didn't even know I had. We think it's a dirty little secret, but in reality, it's like a little clean shot of insight. Here's what I mean. Let's dig a little deeper. Think about a time that you were envious. It could have been related to a friend, a colleague, a sibling, or even someone you don't know. Now, ask yourself these five questions. Why do I want what they have? Why do I think this would make me happy? Why don't I already have this thing in my life? How would my life be different if I had this thing? And finally, what's important for me to see about myself and my desire right now? So see what I mean? I encourage you to just see whatever pops into your mind right now as we're just going through a little bit. Don't squish your reflections and thought down. Just notice them. Notice what you're thinking. So again, the five questions are, one, why do I want what they have? Two, why do I think this would make me happy? Three, why don't I already have this thing in my life? Four, how would my life be different if I had this thing? And five, what's important for me to see about myself and my desire right now? Now, I really believe that the feeling of envy provides a unique opportunity to look into your internal window of desire, what you really, really want in your life. Thoughts create feelings. So when you're feeling envious, you're thinking something that creates that feeling for you. Your challenge now is to notice what you're thinking. What is going on up there? I've heard the most interesting insights about envy, actually. Maybe it's someone's lifestyle that makes you feel envious, like your friend who has more flexibility than you do and is always able to be there for her parents or go to lunch with a friend. She is always available. Or maybe it's that yoga studio that you went to when you were in Costa Rica. You know, the one where you couldn't stop thinking about why you couldn't do something like this too, right? Why couldn't I own a yoga studio like this? Were you thinking something like that? Or maybe it's the cousin you have who's really excited about her retirement plan because she's going to take pottery classes. Or what about your neighbor who has amazing gardens and is always outside tending to them? Or something that colleague has, you know, the one with the successful business who still finds time to exercise in the morning. Or that friend you have who always looks so pulled together. I think you get the point. It could be anything. Envy isn't the same for everyone, but what's important is what it means when you feel it. Now that you've been getting used to this idea, make sure to really process what you've learned about yourself. Remember, envy is really just about when you want a possession or situation that someone else has. It's about your desire. So my friend, what is your desire? What did envy just teach you? What do you really, really want? So good, right? Envy's like a sneak attack on your brain. Now ask yourself these five questions to see what you can learn about what you really, really want. What is envy saying to you? 
Is envy helping you focus on something you've been ignoring in your life? This is really what happened to me. I wanted to be an entrepreneur more than I knew. What about you? Is envy inspiring you about what's possible? Maybe you always wanted to own a yoga studio, but you have so many ideas about why this isn't possible for you that you shut down your thoughts about what it would be like just as quickly as they pop into your brain. It doesn't mean, like with the Costa Rica example, it doesn't mean that you want to do it in Costa Rica. You might, but maybe you didn't even know that you wanted to do it until that situation. Is envy helping you shift or change? Maybe that woman who you always see running, even in the rain, maybe she's driving you crazy. Maybe envy about her motivation is the thing you need right now to help you focus on the exercise that you want in your life. Is envy opening your eyes to give voice to a secret desire? I love this idea. This happened to me when I heard somebody talking about a trip that I didn't even know how much I wanted to take. For me, it was whitewater rafting in the Grand Canyon. What is your secret desire that envy can help you understand more? And is envy suggesting how you could be more courageous? Oh, good one, right? Maybe envy can be the nudge you need to really appreciate how you're not doing something you really want to do because of fear. I just love, love, love knowing that the universe has provided us with a little bit of help when we get in our own way and can't figure things out. Who would have thunk it? Envy can surprise you in a really good way. It turns out that envy might even be your friend, your non-judgmental friend who loves you no matter what. What if envy's true purpose in life is to help you be really, really happy? The thing is that it's a super common regret to feel like you didn't let yourself be happier in your life. Tuning into your deep desires is a clue to what you really, really want. But now what? What can you do to really drive this point home? I've boiled it down to five simple steps to use your envy for good. Five simple steps. Here we go. One, notice how envy makes you feel. Where is it in your body? How would you describe the feeling to someone else without using the word envious? Sometimes you need to know how it feels to wake you up, to pay attention to what you're feeling so you can click in to what you're thinking. And that's number two. Try to catch the exact thought that you're thinking that's creating this feeling of envy. It might be, I really wish I could take that class, or I really wish I could get out of the cold winter for a month or two every year. Try to nail down your thoughts. Number three, dig in and ask yourself, what can I learn from envy? What does this thing that you want mean in terms of where you're at with your life? Number four, decide what you want to do with this new insight. Sit on it, plan for it, jump on it. What is it that you want to do? You don't have to ignore it. And number five, continue to work on noticing this feeling and what you can learn from it. Really be on to yourself when it comes to this desire. Your increased awareness can really change your life and also what you think is possible. Now that's it, my friend. How to use envy for good. And what I mean is you can use envy to make your life better and more meaningful And now that you know how to be more intentional with your thoughts and feelings, you can use this skill of sniffing out and using envy forever. As the great poet and philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, desire is possibility seeking expression. Sometimes it comes in the form of envy. And that's just how I see it. Envy is there for you to use for good. That's it for today's episode. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning and feeling stuck. It's time for you to get excited about your life again. Being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at susierosenstein.com. Download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s, at susierosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. And if you're ready to finally put yourself first, 
become a first lady. Join my new midlife membership, Finally First. This is an upbeat virtual community for midlife women who want clarity, courage, and connection to make the changes they want in their next chapter. Sign up for the VIP waitlist now because the doors will open again soon and you'll be ready to go. Head over to www.iamfinallyfirst.com. Let's do this, ladies. Let's do it together, one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening, and I will talk to you next week.